Hello and welcome back to another video. This is the aftermath of Wolverhampton Wanderers 1, West Ham United 2. We won a game. Shock. We won a game. Um, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe. We are nearly on 250. Try to get to 500 before the end of, or any, uh, the, end of the year. Uh, the work rate is on point today. I've done two TikToks already. So two videos today. And uh, obviously Wolves... West Ham, a game I was not looking forward to, and I don't think you could have blamed me watching the, the first half especially. Um, typical West Ham away from home, timid, lifeless, no no idea with the ball. I did a tweet about it on the day, no idea with the ball, no um, intent to win, no pressing, not even an organisation. No, it doesn't look, don't, didn't look like there was any chemistry on the pitch. There never usually does look like there's any chemistry on the pitch. Now, we don't lose many games at home. Uh, we draw a lot. And we get the battering by Arsenal. Which I can never live down. I can never live down. That's always going to be there. Games like Bournemouth at home is always going to be there. But going to this game... <clears throat> um, Especially in the first half, it was just... We was giving Wolves the ball when they had no attackers. They were playing a left back in a front three and a number 10. They didn't have a striker on the pitch. Their youngster striker was ill, so he was on the bench. He came on. Cunha only, could only play a few minutes in the second half. He played like half an hour. This is the kind of Wolves side we were dealing with. Now, modern U is not fun to go. It's not a fun place to go at all. And obviously, I discussed about the fact that we haven't won this since lockdown. Everything changed in the second half. Obviously, we made two subs. Ben Johnson came on for Sufal, rightly so. Sufal was shit. Antonio came on for Suchek, rightly so. Suchek was shit. They're usually shit, but then they get a golden assist and everyone, you know, forgets. Now, Sufal's a brilliant crosser when he has space. Like, the cross against Aston Villa, he had space there. But he doesn't have space a lot. So when people fail to close him down, they, like... The easiest way to play against him is just close him down. Like It's not actually that hard to play against Vladimir Sufa. But that was the problem. It, was, it wasn't even like he was being tested. It wasn't even like he was being aggressively pressed. The guy was passing the ball out of play. He was passing it out of play. When there was nothing on him. There's like five yard passes. You don't need to be coached. To not pass five yards. No, I'm not. I don't blame David Moyes for Sufal passing five yards. I blame David Moyes for playing him. I blame David Moyes for not requesting a right back for thinking that Ben Johnson and Sufal are good enough right backs. Ben Johnson's. I was. I was still to remain to this day. Ben Johnson should not have that new contract. He's going to go to Crystal Palace anyway. People are going to be up in arms about Ben Johnson. We can do better than Ben Johnson. We can do better than Vladimir Sufal. Now we need to be a big rebuild. In the summer. And that doesn't help when you've got two right backs that should go. But we will see what happens. And I'll discuss more about that another time. Because we don't know who the manager's going to be. We don't know where we're going to finish. We don't know. Anyone's situation. <sighs> but then also. Jared Bowen gets injured. And luckily from what I've heard of from ex-West Ham employee. On the West Ham way. It's out there on Twitter. That it's just heavy bruising so we won't know until 48 hours later because of the whole because i think that's purposely been said because we've got the game on thursday 48 hours from now it's wednesday and Moyes will pr try and play it down in a press conference we're not going to know anything about it really so you'll find out pretty much on the lineups i'm i'm gonna be sure that you'll find out on the day when the lineups happen when or if bowen starts if he's coming out off the bench is he going to be wrist he shouldn't be risked, really. We have Maxwell Corday there that he doesn't play. He'll play Ward Prowse, Suchek Alvarez. He'll play that midfield again. And that's the same midfield that played on Saturday as well. It's the midfield that doesn't work. It's the midfield that should never play together. Now, thank God Edson Alvarez was back because we needed, we needed that physicality. We needed, um, you know, our team to not get run through. Unfortunately, he's also banned for the Neverkusen first game. Uh, which it, 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 we shouldn't rely on one person but that's what is depleting my hope um, in terms of 
how much of a chance we actually have. But <clears throat> I, I'll, I'll never get the tactic of trying to sit back against a team that don't have their best attackers on the pitch. That are that could have overtaken us if they had won. That they could have easily have won if they had if they had Huang, Cunha, and Neto, they would have won that game easily. Now, obviously, I spoke about this a little bit <clears throat> in my match reaction. The narrative of that our quality shone through is a big myth. We scored a corner that went straight into the net, which Jose Sar should be better for that. But James Will Prass's delivery was also very good, and they didn't expect that to happen. I don't think even I, our players or Will Prass expected it to happen. And another one was a penalty that was a blatant handball. Now, Emerson did well go being further forward, and we know Emerson's pretty much like a winger playing left back, but he can defend, but he is pretty much a winger playing left back. But also, Aaron Cresswell coming on, he didn't do that bad. Ben Johnson was okay. He just ran to the byline and waited for someone to block his cross so he could win a corner. That's pretty much all Ben Johnson did. And Ben Johnson doesn't even have that much pace. He just drives with the ball. He's not, he's not exactly fast either, but he drives with the ball. And he was better going forward than Vladimir Sufa. It made a difference. Antonio wasn't his best at all. We know what Antonio can be. We know what Antonio can do. But he, the, pro, the point of the fact that the reason why we performed better is because we had an outlet up front. It's just down to this, this manager's game management and lack of keeping up the momentum and his BS in terms of Having, not having the knowledge of the modern game. How football has moved on past him in the Premier League. That's the third game we've won this year in the Premier League. And I'm happy that we've won the game. But it wasn't exactly a... It was it, Not even about it being a nice watch. It's just... There was nothing there. Like... How, how many times do I have to say this week in, week out? If we have to put... And also, I'll get onto this in a minute. If you're going to sit back, you've got a counter. We didn't do that. Paquetá is not a touchline winger. Paquetá was awful in the first half. It wasn't great in the second half either. It wasn't a great game from him in general. But he's not a touchline winger. Every time he was receiving the ball from wide area, guess who was getting the ball? The Wolves players. Semedo was getting the ball. Sarabia was getting the ball. Aitnori was getting the ball. The midfielders were getting the ball. But if we have to put up with another two years of this, and I don't think Moyes will get a new contract, but if, if, we, if we have to put up with, with another two years of this bullshit, I don't know how I'm going to keep doing match reactions. Because I'm talking about the same things week in, week out. Now, you wouldn't think that we'd won because I'm complaining a lot. But it wasn't a good performance. The second half was okay. It wasn't a good performance. It was good for our standards. The fact that we're seventh is mental. I've said this a lot. Week in, week out, I say this. The fact that we're seventh proves how bad the Premier League is right now. I don't really understand it. I don't really understand the quality of the Premier League right now. I, we're getting lucky when it comes to certain things. Like, but we wonder how if you could win three games in a calendar year from January to April in the Premier League and still be seventh. That's a problem about the league. Luckily, a lot of results went our way. Bournemouth lost. Chelsea drew. Brighton lost. We beat Wolves. The only one that didn't go our way was the Newcastle game, but even Fulham lost. Like, from 7th to 13th, there's a, there's a battle there. I've been saying 9th, and I can, I'd still probably think we finished ninth, But I wouldn't be surprised if we finished in European places because of how bad this league really is. If we get Europe for another year, it's a great achievement by David Moyes. But again, as I said, leave on a high. Leave on a high for the love of God, leave on a high. Because it won't be the same next season. Pakita will be gone. They'll need another creative replacement that Moyes will stifle. We've got players there that would not want to play under this system. We've already seen the quotes from Tilo Kero coming about about his like how about how playing in the low block in the low block didn't get the best of his abilities. Now even when we were trying to play good football, good football, possession football, playing through the lines, when we signed all these players in the summer of twenty twenty two, it wasn't even like we were trying properly. It wasn't even like boys can coach that type of football anyway. So nothing none of that really made sense to me, and I wasn't really surprised that. Uh, Tilo Kerr came out with that because think about how many other footballers could come out with that even if Ben Rama fully leaves West Ham you'll probably see a quote from him of four hours as well 
Like, you're going to see more quotes from certain players. Like, they're honest players. They're not ones to throw their toys out of the pram, but they're not going to lie, are they? But anyway, that's the aftermath of the Wolves game. Let me know what you think in the comments. I've got the Man City documentary uh, review up today as well. This is the first of two uploads. Um, there's pretty much a video every day, barring Saturday, um, because there's nothing to talk about on Saturday. You'll get the Leverkusen preview. Well, you'll get the watch along for the Champions League games tomorrow on Tuesday. You'll get the Leverkusen preview on Wednesday. Leverkusen match reaction on Thursday. Fulham preview on Friday. And then Sunday, Fulham match reaction. And then we're, you know, schedule keeps going on and on and on. Uh, but other than that, that is all from me. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, we're nearly on 250, trying to get to 500. Social media is over in the description if you want to follow me on the email for the inquiries. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.